Oh, fuck, that's so great. Squeeze a little harder. Oh, how's that? Oh, that's great. Now try kicking my balls. Okay. Oh, is this the biggest dick you've ever seen? I mean, yeah, relatively. Can you say it? Yeah, dude, it's the biggest dick I've ever seen. Mmm. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> that was really good. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Robert. And this is going to be a spoilerful podcast about Gen V Season 1, Episode 1, entitled God You. And like I said before, spoilerful. So it's been out for a couple of days. So if you got spoiled, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop here right now and then go watch the show if you have it and then come back to us. But the episode's been out for a while, actually three episodes, but I only watched one because right. I'm trying to do this episodically so that way I don't have to, uh, you know, binge watching and go, I have to wait another week. <laughs> <laughs> we could spread it out a little bit here and there until we get to actual uh, every episode if I wanted to, because they're, they're pretty long times for these uh, episodes, uh, like close to an hour. Yeah. No, I saw that. I was like, oh, it's a one hour show. Okay. Yeah, which is pretty cool because sometimes with like Disney Plus, we get screwed thinking, I got an hour. No, it's 48 minutes. No, oh, I got an hour. No, it's 28 minutes. <laughs> Disney <laughs> Plus screws you so much because in an episode, it could be sometimes I'm like, oh, it's 20 minutes long. And then on the next one, it's almost an hour long. And I'm like, guys, I mean, figure don't it you out. guys have, yeah, figure <laughs> it out. Don't you have like a format? I, I just feel like it's the most dumbest thing, because if you're going to try to put that episode, like, let's say, on regular TV, where now there's commercials and all these things. Yeah. How are you going to do that? You're just going to say, oh, one week is going to be half an hour, but the next week is going to be an hour and a half, you know, episode, or they're going to break it. Up? I don't know. Very mm. interesting, though. Well. Aside from that, uh, what we're talking <laughs> about is a specific show, which is Gen V, but we all know this comes from the boys series and not technically a boys show, but has all the elements of the boys within it. And it was based off the uh, comic book story arc. We got to go now by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson. And a lot of people say that it was part of the boys in the sense that the the trade paperbacks were within the boys lineage of series, which right. I, I which I don't you know I don't blame people for saying that it, it's what it is because you have all the same characters that we had in the boys. You'll see Ashley Barrett. You'll see um, who was it? Oh, Sean Patrick Thomas who plays Polarity is right. in in the series as well. In the very beginning, we get Elizabeth Shue. Mm -hmm. We got a flashback. And when was the last time we saw Elizabeth Shue in the boys? First it's season. <laughs> it's been a minute. It's been a minute. And we had a train as well. Correct. So he's been in there. So obviously they're going back and forth. And oh, I'm sorry, too. Shetty. Indira Shetty, who uh, is uh, ahead of the college. She was a former senator. She was the one that was blowing people's minds up, if you don't recall. <laughs> Yeah, literally blowing their minds up. But well, she's not in this episode. No, but uh, she does make appearances for later on. And the reason why I knew that was from the promotion <laughs> that okay. they put out all the promos. They show her same thing with Colby Minifee for uh, for Ashley Barrett and same thing with Jesse T. Usher for uh, uh, for no, is it Jesse T. Usher? No. Plays a train. Well, that's same thing with Jensen Ackles as well, who plays um, Jesse T. Uh, yeah, Jesse T. Usher plays a uh, a train. Yeah, and then Jensen Ackles plays. Uh, I forget what his character is. Uh, something uh, soldier boy. Soldier boy. I was gonna right. just say that too because I wasn't even looking at. It. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. <laughs> but they, uh, yeah, they, we're going to get all those callbacks to the boys itself and those particular characters. I'm looking at right now. I just pulled it up. The uh, the cast for Gen V 
Uh huh. And I was surprised they have them listed here. And I we I don't think I haven't looked ahead. Like I said, I only watched the first episode, but I don't think Jason Ritter showed up. Did he? No, no, he did not. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. But yeah, this also have a whole bunch of guests on it. I mean, from yeah, from what I see here, Sean Patrick Thomas, Margot Pagosi, um, Ty Barnett. I mean, that's just like a lot of people. Yeah, that I guess came out on the boys that are going to come out here, probably, and yeah. just to to give us that excitement, and obviously whatever happens here is probably going to flow into the boys itself. Correct, because it's like uh, if you remember that Disney movie. This is my generalization description to anybody. It's sky high on acid and sex and drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, if you remember that Disney movie with Kurt Russell and uh, oh, I forget her name. It was uh, Travolta's wife, but they had a son that was going into a superhero school. Right. Uh, and, shoot. I don't remember then. I don't but, remember that. Yeah. But regardless, I, I just would describe it as that for the fact that, you know, at, at that point in that movie, he didn't get his powers until uh, puberty hit. He just hit him later on, later on. That had Mary Elizabeth Winstead, uh, like, yeah, not to be sidetracked, but I always do. But they, uh, it kind of gave me that feeling. It's like you had clicks, people who knew people. I started getting that feel within this particular movie. It's almost like a, a 90210, a Buffy high school kind of movie or show where it, it showed how people, like the kids, would separate themselves on so being popular and. Yeah, having are. the different cliques in uh yeah. in schools and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then also the 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 need to be on top. So uh it, it's like that on steroids or in this case, somebody's crazy uh dream or nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we, we got a variety of cast. The cast is very young in it, so I'm liking on Lizzie Broadway's character Emma, who I forget what they call her, uh Tiny or what are which one she's the one that makes herself tiny oh lizzie yeah lizzie broadway is her name uh played by emma mayer yeah yeah she plays like little uh tiny little cricket is her little name little cricket that's what it was i knew it was a yeah. weird kind of name i'm like uh <laughs> little person is usually what i would think too right no little cricket <laughs> Maddie Phillips doesn't have a, a Q name. The only reason why is they had a little cricket for for Emma, the character Emma is in it because she has her own YouTube, and in right. the episode too, which I thought was Correct. pretty cool. But uh, before we get too crazy, I don't think I put in the actual synopsis. So with that, I'm going to say what the synopsis is, and we'll go into it because this it's so funny how they the title of the episode is God You which is taken from Gadolkin University. Right. So, uh, God, you would you think with all these kids, they have superheroes. Boom. That's a title. Uh, the synopsis is we jump forward to the present day where we find an 18 year old Marie Moreau played by Jess Sinclair in a group home, just another cog in a foster care machine. Her goal, we quickly learn, is to land a spot at the prestigious Gadolkin University. So, she could capitalize on her superhero abilities and make a life for herself. So that synopsis is kind of vague, but in the sense <laughs> that it does what it needs to do. It just gives you an overall idea, but it doesn't really go into the twisty turny things that you, you get with Kate Dunlop, who's there, who's part of the click. The same thing with Andre Anderson, who apparently his father is polarity. So you could see the nudging of his father and how he does that attempt to do better and all that cool stuff. Clancy Brown's character. I think, was he the principal? He's like a Dean or something like that, but yeah, he, uh, I mean, are we doing spoilers? Yeah. It's spoilerful dude. Yeah. So <laughs> it's the fact that I thought, I mean, the way they made it seem through, uh, in the, uh, in the advertisement is that he was going to be a part of this show for a while. And it just turns out that, uh, he just kind of had a very short role in this. Yeah. They might, they might show him, I guess in flashbacks and other episodes. Possibly. 
well, same thing with uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger, who plays uh, Luke Riordan, or what's the yeah. name of it? God, uh, Golden Boy. So they made it sound like Golden Boy was like, oh, the big thing. And you're like, oh, he's going to be around forever. He's probably going to be <laughs> <laughs> this main character. Well, I, I guess so. In <laughs> flashback form, yeah, if possible. But you, you get your click personality between, um, I would say, Andre, Kate, Golden Boy. Everybody wants to be part of that crowd. And the first introduction we get out of it is looks like some sort of fight club or fight day out in arena. Or- yeah, it's the typical jock. You know, you go to high school, you go to a, or, or any university where you see the jocks actually in the middle of the field practicing and things like that. And then you see the other students that are just probably on, the, you know, in the bleachers or whatever, just watching yeah, just along. Watching. Yeah. <laughs> you know, some of them wishing that they could, you know, be there and things like that. But that's exactly what you see. And then you see all these different students with different abilities doing things, you know. So when it opens, you see this one girl like she's benching. I don't know. 10,000 pounds or something like that (laughs) while the rest of the guys are benching like 45 pounds you also see somebody with speed you see other people with you know just different abilities doing things which is kind of cool very reminiscent of what i would say you know the uh the x-men mansion would do when they had scenes in the comic books where like you know all the students are outside doing different things or mostly in in the com uh, not in the comics but mostly in the movies they showed that uh, in the comics, it was more geared, I would say, more or less inside the danger room. In the danger room, but they also uh, would do stuff outside. Oh, there's okay. a lot. I, yeah, there were there were a lot of there were a lot of uh, what is it, comic books that, or issues where they would also have certain things that they would do outside. Sometimes they're playing baseball. Sometimes they're doing other things that are playing okay. uh, volleyball. But you will see them all using their powers. I think the danger room was more for like, you know, actual practice for combat or something like that. But, you know, it was a uh, it's pretty cool. I thought that was a cool scene. Yeah, I thought the scene itself was pretty cool for the fact that it introduces us to uh, Golden Boy. You see, who is his girlfriend? Obviously, right away, we know that Kate's his girlfriend. Right. And whose friends are. He shows up and it's like literally it's like a show off of each other's power and talent. And literally, he rips off this dude's arms. And I'm like, oh, whoa, darn. That, and I'm, that threw me <laughs> off. Same here. I was like, it, it, oh, okay, is this like a battle of the the best? And he's out now. He's not going to be at the school. And then they yeah. come back. And he, I guess I'm like, oh, that's the reason why they have him. <laughs> yeah. So at first I, don't, I thought it was very gladiatorial or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, this is like, you know, kill or be kill or something like that. And then it just shows this, you know, this guy's arms are just all of a sudden being fused back into his body. And that's his ability, I guess, is to put himself back together. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess yeah. that's a good ability. You could just walk through a minefield, get blown up and then just... <laughs> <laughs> have people put the have the people put the parts back together in your live which i find very interesting because golden boy you see him flame up a little right right but he's got excessive strength and correct and now with the boys as we know a lot of them have like one particular power only starlight has her ability of start like something to do with light itself Queen Maeve is always strong, but she can't fly. Right. The only person that had multiple powers was, oh, the head dude himself. That That's crazy that we all love. Oh, uh, you're talking about, um, what's his name? Uh, Homelander. Homelander is the only one. Yeah, because Homeland, Hom- Homelander was based off of Superman. Correct. You know, so Superman has all these different powers, I would, I would say, and he has the same thing. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, all of the boys have basically powers mm-hmm. that the Justice League have. Mm-hmm. So A Train is the Flash. Maeve right. is almost like Wonder Woman. Yeah, we right, we kind of exactly. get we get that out of that. But I'm just saying, in in the key aspect of this particular show, a lot of the characters, like you know, you look at Little Cricket, she just turns little. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and when it comes, like Ant Man. 
<laughs> yeah, literally Ant Man. And then uh, with Andre, he his power is to uh, change objects and float them. Andre has metal. Well, let me see here, if I'm not mistaken. Andre has, yeah, it's he's a metal bender. Yeah. So so Jazz is a blood bender. Yes. So she manipulates. At first, you know, interesting when when the episode starts, it starts, of course, with a train being accepted into the seven. And on that same day, Jazz basically Marie. gets gets her period <laughs> yes. or Marie. Yeah, gets her period. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden she notices that, which is kind of gross, but the, the blood from her period starts to float. Yes. And with that, I mean, she freaks out. Her mom rushes into the bathroom and all of a sudden the blood, she uses the blood as like a weapon and it slices the mom's neck. And next thing you know, mom is just bleeding out. Yes. Dad comes along and all of a sudden she blows up. That's the part that I don't get. Did she blow up the mom? And then he got kind of like the shrapnel or did she do something to the dad? But somehow both the parents are dead because she of did that. something with the mom's blood because the mother was bleeding out. And I right. think it exploded like a bomb onto him. It, like it became explosive. And then, right. then you see his face covered in like, 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 like shards of glass from the mirror like, or it could. Yeah, it could be from the mirror or something like that. Mm -hmm. But later we find out that it's not just her blood that she could bend. She it's could a, bend other, other people's blood or anybody's blood. So she's actually so that's that was actually very interesting. Yep. Uh, but like you were saying, Andre has metal bending abilities and Emma has uh, shrinking abilities. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, Kate. Kate, she's a manipulator. I think uh, it's like she's, the power to like she has to touch people with her hands. Right. She's and, an empath and she could actually push people to do whatever she wants. But she's limited to any, anything that she could do throughout the day. Right. Because if she overdoes it, she kind of could hurt herself. And then Jordan Lee, she's a gender shifter. They call her by gender. Yeah. By the way, the actress who who plays, of course, the, the female role, her mm -hmm. name is London Thor. One of the coolest freaking names I have ever heard to be called London Thor. That is just awesome. Uh, all <laughs> so, right. She's not listed on my uh, cast view. Yeah, she's a. Uh, yeah, no, she's. Well, you got to go to Wikipedia and you'll see it all there. Oh, OK, well, <laughs> I, I got I got it through general from uh, Google, but. Oh. Yeah, because you get Derek Liu who plays it, and then Jordan Thor plays, uh, uh, and then uh, the character's name is Jordan Lee, right? And uh, it seems like the character prefers to be female than uh, the, male. I don't know. I thought there was like an even amount of female and male in there because when they went to the club, mm. he was male. And then when she, I think it's when she's in school, mm -hmm. is more almost almost female. I don't know. Uh, that's, that's weird. That, that'll be very that'll be very interesting to see throughout the uh, the entire show. Yeah, same here. But uh, and, then, and then there's a uh, Sam. So he's a he's a young soup with a uh, super strength. So and then of course uh, we don't really get to see much of Sam. Right? No. And then Indira, the dean of Godolkin University and a former behavioral therapist who does not have superpowers. Shetty, you're talking about? Yeah. And Indira Shetty? Yeah. Oh, I thought I, I looked at her and I thought right away the senator. No, that's not her. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got the wrong thing. I was going on memory from the boys. No, no, that's not her. That's uh it's a completely different character. Okay. Good to know. All right. <laughs> now I'm more educated. <laughs> uh yeah. Yeah. And then uh well with the uh, Jordan Lee, is there any other powers other than changing gender? That's I think all there is so far. That's all well, there is. I remember seeing Clancy Brown as the the dean coming out of his office when he had a, a 
a specific. I know he, and he shot, shot her, shot her, and it stops, and that's it. And then he, and then she changes to the male version. Correct. So that's going to be, yeah, that'll be an interesting um, character to see, to see what other powers they have. I have a feeling that some of these characters are going to have multiple powers Mm. as the show goes on. Okay. It's just a feeling because, I mean, you're right. I mean, I just, I I mean, it says gender bending here, but um, that one scene, he stops a bullet. Yeah. Or I'm what? Oh, it could be like this. It could be. I th- oh, you know what? If you think about it, w- in male form, he's really strong and invinc- almost invincible. Mm-hmm. And in female form, I think she d- has a different power. That's a possibility. So I think that's what it is. I mean, All right, I, wa- I, I I watched it once and I, I would have to, you know, watch it again. But I think that's what's happening there. Same here. I watched it once, but that, that was my uh, you got you listeners. Tell us if uh, what you think about that, too, because obviously I did not watch ahead. But uh, from the very beginning of this, uh, we talked about the how the clicks happen and how. You see Emma as uh, Little Cricket tries to show Marie around, and Marie is trying to hide her background, where she came from. She doesn't want to tell people that she literally killed her parents, and she was in a home where her powers are deemed dangerous, and then she has to stay there until she's 18 before, because if she doesn't get adopted or fostered into a home where people would take her, because right. she is dangerous, she has to go to a different clinic that Vought has created for adults that are dangerous or or their powers have manifested. Because it seems to be something that's within uh, the communities. Even though the government, the communities center around the idea of having people who are powered, that still cliche of people not knowing that people bought Gen V and injected into their kid. Or took it <laughs> as that just so they could get their kid powers to right. claim to popularity and be part of the seven. And that's like seems to be the overall goal. Everybody wants to go to into the seven at at a certain point. But yeah, I I, I like that whole nine oh two and oh click click kind of thing, especially when uh Emma introduces uh, Marie at, in their roommates, obviously, and the first thing that she sees her with is like trying to wrestle her hamster, or what was it, a gerbil or a hamster? And uh, that was her. It YouTube. was yeah, it was like their gerbil. She's like fighting with the gerbil or something like that, which I thought it was funny. Yeah, and uh, oh, I forget the name of the gerbil's name, but apparently it was based after uh, an actor, <laughs> and uh, it was pretty funny. But they, um, yeah, I like I said, I just watched it once. I didn't go through it uh, like a few times. But uh, Emma tries to show her around, Maria around, and then I, I guess that she didn't get the class she really wanted, which was more of like more justice based. So that way she could become like a crime fighter. I think it was part of the crime fighting labs or classes that they had. And she didn't get in. And the person that turned her down was Jordan Lee who's head of admissions that works under the Dean. And uh, not only did she almost not get into Godolkin university, but she almost didn't, you know, she didn't get the class either because uh, Jordan decides, no, you can't have it because they had, yeah, it's a typical bullshit that, you know, but it's based off of Instagram, YouTube, all that stuff. If you, you have to have that profile. It's kind of like a LinkedIn account that you have to have as a kid that has <laughs> superpowers in order to get all this, which is so strange. But we get to see the clickiness of everything of uh, how it is. And then uh, it kind of moves in out of that. And then we see Emma and we see a little bit more about Emma. We know more about her power, how she becomes small and tiny. Right. 
but before we get that, it, she gets involved with this other kid who is wanting to be clicky, but apparently he must have a small penis because he wants it to make it look huge. So <laughs> <laughs> we get that one scene, Rob, that you we were talking before the recording is like it reminds us of that episode. I what was it? Was that from- it was an episode where I forgot who it was that all of a sudden he goes right into some guy's penis, penis. yep, and starts to you know rub the walls inside the penis. Well, this one you see her shrinking down and just basically hugging his penis or something like that, which was crazy. And she's just like like it, it like hanging off of a big tree or something, just like trying yep. to wrap her legs around it. And somehow she's just jumping up and down, I guess, masturbating him, but then kicking him in the balls. balls yeah. And he <laughs> likes the ball kicking. <laughs> okay. it, was, it was one of the most weird. Like I said to myself, okay, when this got filmed, one or two things, they either had the actor hug some kind of, you know, uh, thing where it's all green screen and then yeah. later she was told hey you're gonna be hugging a, you know it's a penis but you know whatever oh they actually made it like a giant penis for her to like you know yeah <laughs> be uh, at but least it was just wild it, it was crazy when i saw that i was like oh and we're off <laughs> and uh, well that was the one thing i saw too i was like all right they better not go to the extreme and have an explosion that's what I thought was going to happen. Yeah. And I, cause she, all of a sudden she slides down the base. Yeah. And, she, and she's at the base. And I said, if this man climaxes and they show all of a sudden her getting like just showered, I, I, I would have yeah. been like, I don't know how that get will get past any sensor or anything like that. Well, it's rated M for mature. And <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's Amazon too, but well, <laughs> it is kind of graphic in its own way. But then again, it's no graph more graphic than what we've seen with women's nudity back in the day too, right? So, but I, I thought, <laughs> yeah, you said it right there. It's like when you said, "Oh," and I hadn't even watched it yet. I was like, "Okay, that good." So that must mean they went they went nonstop with the first episode with either the wackiness, the craziness or the blood. So <laughs> obviously in the very beginning with Marie, we see the blood by the time we get to Emmett little cricket, she's it's kind of more sexual, which we, we got from the, I think season two of the right. boys where it was like all sexualized. And then, uh, oh, I, I forget what they called the, the orgy. At the end of last season of the boys, but uh, you know what I forget about? I, I forgot about, you know, the orgy or what they're naming, but yeah, no, it's, I, I just think that they're not holding back. No, they're, they're not. just, they're making sure that, Hey, they're going to be as extreme as the boys are. Yeah. Um, because it's just, you know, there, there's some great scenes all over the place, especially with the violence. Um, again, yeah. the arm ripping, uh, and again, spoilers f- for those who, you know, hopefully you watch the uh, episode, but when, um, Patrick, uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger's, uh, character, golden boy, winds up, golden ex- boy, yeah, he, he flies up and commits suicide and explodes. And all of a sudden it's just a, a shower of blood raining down on everybody. Yeah. Uh, you see him also, well, you see when. He kills Tom. Cl- uh, what is it? Uh, not Tom Clancy. Uh, Clancy, Clancy Brown's Brown. the the character dean. Richard. Killed, yeah, I think Brink is his name, but or something like that. Richard. Uh, what is it? Richard. Oh, I'm trying to get, get the last name here. Yeah, I think it was like Brink Fink, something well, like. R- it, they, he Brink. is uh, well, Rich Brink, but his full name is Richard Brinkerhoff. Is okay. the yeah? It's the actual name of the uh. Uh, he's actually a professor. I thought he was more of a, uh, or at least here it says professor. It just seems like he was in charge of something. But it seemed like he was in charge, like almost like a dean, right? But I, I took it as that he was more in charge of admissions more than anything with Jordan, and right. like he kind of vetted the the students or worked in because it was his class that uh, Marie Moreau wanted, right. And she didn't get it, and that's why she was trying to gain audience with him at, within an appointment to see him to talk. And that's when Jordan was being a real pain in the ass and saying, "No, you can't go through." 
Right. But yeah, he, you see Golden Boy wind up like hugging him, holding him, burning him up, burning him up. And so the the whole thing is that, first of all, it's like, what's going on there? Because one, he's making sure that Luke doesn't have to apply to the seven, doesn't have to do anything. It's just like they're going to make him they're going to make him slide into that spot whenever he graduates. Yep. Um, But at the same time. Luke has been having these visions and I think nightmares of a kid in the forest. And somehow Richard is involved with that. Mm. And and so that's the one thing that's the development that, you know, I'm sure that in the next few episodes they're going to talk about more, but it's more about, Hey, you know, what's that relationship there? Why is he trying to get this kid? Why is he trying to let this kid slide through? Or he's mm. trying to get a few of them to slide through because when they all went out to the, uh, you know, to the uh, to the club after uh, after curfew. Yep. Uh, who is it? I think Andre was trying to pick up a girl and he takes a coin, makes it float, and it looks like a little hummingbird. And he says, oh, I'm going to put this little hummingbird in somebody's, you know, glass. Frank. Yep. And somebody bumps into him and the little hummingbird went and sliced up some a woman's neck. Well, All he was really she... drunk. He right. was trying to float it to it to go into the drink. He gets pushed like you right. do in a club. But he is so drunk at this point. Right. He loses control of it. And then it just goes right to the I neck. I don't think he was drunk, drunk, drunk. I just think that he was trying to concentrate on that. And all of a sudden it just got he got bumped. And all of a sudden the. uh the thing just went right into the woman's neck, but she starts bleeding. Yeah. Of course, uh, Marie helps the the girl because everybody wants to leave. Everybody's like, oh, we got to get out of here. Yep. Uh, but she helps the girl by stopping the bleeding with her powers and becomes very popular on uh, social media. Yep. But Richard is willing to expel her and make her take the fall for everything. Because yep. he doesn't, he doesn't want nobody to know that the other kids, oh, they were actually high. That's what it was. They were yeah, all they hot. were on they were, cocaine, and they said it's like, oh, right. we're out of cocaine. We're on that onto this yeah. now. Yeah, right. And because, uh, as a matter of fact, Richard says the last thing I want is people to know that people, uh, the the kids were hot, too high to help a person, and they ran away. So you're gonna take basically the blame for this, because mm-hmm. and then he tried to even blame her for almost killing the woman when she was like no that wasn't me you know and so it's very interesting like what is his motive what is his motivation on being such a dick and why is he trying to do all these things and that's going to be very interesting what's his control and 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 And, and what's his uh pull with vat correct literally what what we're thinking and then there's the kid that was like went crazy and was trying to actually escape yes and so what's the deal with that part? True, true. Yeah, because yeah. even if you look at Andre, he, he was like, who is that? He didn't yeah. even know. And he was just out there playing whatever while Marie was walking by. But he got himself involved, too. And she slows down the kid and then uh, lo- lo- looks like super security at that point because they got weapons, they got body armor, and then they wind up putting like a mask over his face for like, if you're at the doc- uh, dentist's office for, right. <laughs> you know, for your laughing gas and they knock him out and that's it. But yeah, you don't no, see I, hide a hair of it afterwards. You see him get locked up, but that's about it. And he's like screaming to get out. So yeah, that's also another part of like the school, the mystery of the school. Why is, I mean, is this school more of a prison? They make it seem like a prison. And, uh, well, well, it in the very like beginning, it, they made it like a prison. If, like, when Marie showed up, was uh, going over her history, which she was lying to Emma, uh, uh, Emma, Emma about when, right after she changes back from a little cricket, uh, she tries to open the windows. She goes, "Oh, they won't open. Why? Because some kids were flying out and committing suicide or killing themselves." Right. So the windows didn't even open. The windows don't open. What's interesting is that the windows don't open. There's when when Marie was going through the, I guess, the dorms, there was like this security and this uh what I would say, this uh this type of doorway, which is kind of ominous now because mm. 
you know, it's like, it, I don't know. It's just a very different, it's a, it's a, some kind of security doorway. And then the security guard is just like looking at her, like, you know, uh, like that I'm watching you kind of thing. Like the RN who is invisible that you <laughs> saw it in the bonus clip and added a blue. It's like, he goes, well, we're, we're having a meeting down there. It's like, oh, is this meeting going to have you standing there with your dick out? He goes, my dick's out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, they have some. Uh, they have some really cool stuff in there. Uh, it's it, again, this is a so far. I think it's a great episode. Yeah, on how it started. I'm very interested to see how it's going to progress from here. Yeah, you know, I I agree. Uh, to me, I'm interested in the sense that they uh, uh, look at the the actors that we have, that, which are the leads, so the, which are kids. They're playing kids. Obviously, they're in their twenties right. because that's how everything is nowadays. Uh, that's like looking at Buffy the Vampire Slayer, 90210, Melrose Place. They're all playing younger kids or younger people, but they're usually about like eight to ten years older. Yeah. <laughs> no, some of them in the 30s and stuff like that. But yeah, so, no, but they, they get the prettiest of the pretty people. But not only with that, we get a lot more ethnic. And uh, so we got Jordan Lee, who's who's obviously Asian. Andre Anderson uh who is porto is polarity son he's black and uh you, you get your typical white boy which would be luke riordan who plays gold who is golden boy so and then you have uh marie moreau to taking the lead as somebody of color which is really great right and, and it's showing more promise and and like making her the lead character at this point, because after, you know, golden boy kind of blew up. He's not the lead anymore. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I mean, she, even if he was, I mean, it's just, she's the lead of the show. Yeah. Um, but you know, the story I, is focused around her. Literally around it's her journey. Her, right. And yeah. it's her journey because obviously somehow because of guess of her upbringing or her killing her parents somehow, you know, she has to, she's still dealing with that. She's still dealing with the fact that I'm sure her, her sister, she's estranged from her sister who witnessed the entire thing. So yeah. that's going to be also a, a very interesting character development, you know, that we're going to see throughout the show and we'll see how that goes there. But just like in anything in the boys, I think in this show, you're going to see that every character has so much background information. That's going to play into the entire uh, season. So we'll see. Yeah, definitely. We're going to see uh, a lot of cool things coming up. And I expect it the way it starts off to be continuous with its crazy and zany <laughs> right. antics uh, that I look forward to. Now, mind you, they drop the first three episodes like they do with the boys. They, they kind of suck you in. They want you to jump in on it and watch all three at once. I held out. <laughs> I was like, nope, I got something else. I just to didn't cool have the over. time to watch the other two, but there's a good chance. It, probably after this podcast, I'm going to watch the other two. So <laughs> yeah, we'll be covering it anyway later on. But uh, in another about a bunch of right. days or whatever, regardless. But my feeling is I wanted to do this episodically and I do it like my friend Rima because every time anything gets dropped on like netflix that they're doing like uh like uh i forget what it was black mirror was one of them but that's not episodic but uh they were doing a whole bunch of them and uh she goes i'm gonna sit here and watch each episode individually before i record each <laughs> one so and i i have to do i want to do the same thing because i don't wanna, okay i don't want to be the one that thinks and like gets confused Oh, was that in that particular episode? Oh man! No, yeah. I like to I like to watch them and then really, like I I think this one, even though I only saw it once, yeah, was very very memorable. But I sometimes like to do more of a deep dive and just try to see if like okay, let me watch it, and if I have to, I'll watch it again because there's always these little things you miss the first time. Uh, like I'm sure there's a lot of things that we just talked about that we missed some things, uh, but. Yeah, no, it's uh, usually I try to do that. I'll, I'll watch it, enjoy it, and then I'll see it again just for the podcast. And now I analyze it. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Little, yeah. I, I try to do it like two or three times. Usually right. the first is like first impression. 
I got to enjoy it. Second right. is to analyze it. Third is to pull anything I can from it. If there was anything really, really cool or something I questioned about it, or like maybe I had to type out whatever quotes this one, <laughs> I, I didn't, there's only like one quote that I liked out of the whole thing. Which one kick me in the balls? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it, it, it is a, a quote for Emma. And she goes, when golden boy flames on his clothes burn off and he's uncut because I guess like he's impossible to cut. I put my tongue on that. And that's her saying that to oh, Marie Jesus. as they're sitting in the, uh, in the bleachers waiting in the far back. Right. Uh, and I can see a girl saying that. It's like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, no, I didn't have a, I didn't have anything that, you know, stood out for me. Yeah. That was uh, the only one I, cause I knew it was a little bit strange and out there. And that's what stuck with me. Yeah. The only thing I would say when, um, uh, what's the character? Um, Andre, when yeah. he was trying to pick up the girl, he said, the best that could happen is you come home with me. Um, or if not, the worst that could happen is that we just, you know, dance and have a good time, you know, and you could see that she was like, OK, I'm open to that. <laughs> but that was him explaining to her that. If he took the little metal bird, which, of course, caused the accident, and he could actually put it in somebody's drink across the uh, the club. Yeah. You know, that she could pr- that he'll e- that she will either go home with him or at least just dance with him on the dance floor or something like that. Mm. Yeah, that wasn't anything too noteworthy, in my opinion. I only got the one. But honestly... I was just amazed at the craziness. <laughs> it, it was. It was just some really crazy. Like it. Like when it started, and then you get first of all, you know, parents dying. Mm. Then you get arms being ripped off. Then after that, you get little one inch girl. You know, basically jer- jer- jerking this guy off by hugging his penis, <laughs> and then you get more people bleeding and people burning to a cinder and then just a person exploding all these things that you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> who, who in their right mind is uh, coming up with this stuff, but, Oh man, I would love to be in the writing room for that. Really would. I mean, just, just imagine the shit that you're like, so what about this? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm I noticed sure. they have a thing about penises when it comes to the boys. Because remember the guy that was locked away in that one episode, and then they broke into the. Uh, it's where they were holding a lot of soups that were on the loose, and then they had to break in to get something. And the guy had a huge dick that just like. Oh yeah, the, the guy with fantastic the fantastic penis <laughs> that he would just like the dick would just float around or something. Like, yeah, no, it strangled people with it. He yeah, stra- and then it's like, oh, <laughs> it is a penis cent- a penis centric uh show on that, and uh I'm surprised they they don't do anything else with. Funny enough, they don't do anything with, as much with a female part. But they do it with the male parts more. Mm. Which I find that uh, interesting. So, but, but hey, listen. I mean, we we we've exploited women throughout history and movies. I mean, now is you know time to uh, have them exploit us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's about what all I had for uh, talk about uh, Gen V. <laughs> <laughs> so, what were your memorable moments on this? On this one, definitely. Uh, oh, the first one was her fighting the hamster, just her prepping and doing that for YouTube. That was an impression, <laughs> an impression I can never get out of my head. Right. Uh, and her getting small as she's puking. That's that shocked me because I was like, okay, so how does she get small? And then all of a sudden she starts puking and you see her small and she goes, oh. So she has to purge literally to get small. Right. And uh, she has to eat to get big. So it's like, okay, this is Alice in Wonderland. Well, I think it's a social commentary on the. Uh, Bulimia? On, uh, what is, uh, yeah. on you know, just kind of like women's, you know, uh, image and stuff like that. And how, you know, women, you know, try to purge, just, just get skinnier and what you, what we call smaller. Mm-hmm. Um, 
in order to be, I guess, light or, you know, or at least, I, I mean, listen, bulimia is, uh, is, is kind of a horrible thing out there. And, and, uh, I don't understand it. Uh, and that's something that, you know, I don't wish it on anybody, but yeah. that being said, I mean, I think, I don't know. I feel like this was a social commentary on that. I could be wrong. I mean, oh, uh, there, there's a lot of commentary. Actually, if you, when you first watch the episode, they talk about, uh, suicide. And yes. if there's any issues with that, please call this number and blah, blah, blah. Correct. I, I was like, okay, so they're really out there. They're at least they're being understanding that these are touchy subjects. Yeah. But you know, the, there are certain shows back in the day where they would just leave it out there. Correct. Yeah. And the uh, kids would fall through with it. But uh, yeah, the, that the, the fighting in the, uh, the yard with the golden boy and uh, the guy with the huge dreads that he rips his arm off that that was right. something the club scene obviously the very beginning with marie moreau and then of course that ending yeah uh, those are things that stick with me as far as images and memories of uh the episode just from first watching now mind you longevity wise for as i continue I still see there's an issue with Marie because she's still trying to fit in and she's hiding the fact that she killed her parents. And she's I think I think people know though. I think it's known to some degree, but they she still says it even to Emma. She's just like, Oh, oh, I, I get bothered with my brother too. And oh, it wasn't yeah. until later on in the episode that it comes out to some to somebody yeah, that that that's gonna be i don't know i mean we'll see what happens there and we'll see what happens with the sister because i'm sure there's gonna be scenes where she's trying to reconcile with the sister or something like that or probably the sister might have you know maybe uh uh powers too at some point and mm. next thing you know they throw down because of it i don't know that's that's that, a possibility that's a possibility i mean listen i mean there's still the why is it that luke actually killed himself yeah. Uh, was it because he felt guilty that he killed Richard or was it because he felt guilty because the visions he's having, he was a part of something. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot there to actually, um, I just soak it in to hold on to later on. Right. As I watch the show, it was something that I'll, uh, like, yeah, you know, like you said, I'll, I'll probably go and turn on the second episode after this. I can. <laughs> it's like my friend Pake does. It's like, I'm going to go right to it. Why? Because I have to go watch. It. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, but yeah, no, that's a, uh, that's, I would say that's a good way to start this, uh, this show. Yeah. Um, as I always used to say, and still do and continue to say about feedback, we actually did get some feedback. Oh, okay. not through Facebook, not through Instagram. Guess where? Where? YouTube. Oh, look at that. Go figure. So uh, somebody by the name of Hunting Violets. Uh, <laughs> so Hunting Violet says on the first one, now they did multiple because I guess they were watching or viewing the, uh, the podcast as we're doing it. And this is in regards to our coverage of uh, Good Omen Season 2 Episodes 3 and 4 review episode 241 on the podcast right and they say nothing hell could come up with for nazis would be too bad really and i'm like okay <laughs> and then they continue on saying oh the mini so doesn't take place in nazi germany i think that was their response to me which thank you for correcting me hunt hunting violets it, it takes place in london during the blitz which is true when, when it is being bombed by Nazi Germany, Connie Willis's time traveling historians spend some time in the Blitz. Other places during this time in blackout and all clear. Yes, Beelzebub is basically chief operating officer of hell. Yep, we, we kind of discussed that later on uh, <laughs> towards the, uh, the last two episodes uh, and what we thought of him. So and uh beelzebub was hell's representative who came up to try to get adam to go through with the apocalypse last season so uh and then the last thing they say is the episodes are written by neil gaiman and john finnamore the minisodes are because they were minisodes rob in between i don't know if you followed along no i haven't actually seen the mini uh mini episodes so they're, they're part of the actual story 
for this season. So but where are they? Be- where are they being shown? They're actually in the episode. So literally, you'll see like in the very beginning of of the first, like the very first episode, you'll see Crowley standing there out in the middle of space, and he's okay. creating things with stars. And Aziraphale comes like flapping over, going, "Hey, what are you doing?" And it's them, and it was like the first beginning of time. He was making multiple uh, universes. Uh, Crowley was making multiple universes. So this is like the very before the Big Bang. Right. And he goes, did you send that up to corporate? He goes, no. I just did it. Okay, I see what (laughs) you're talking about. (laughs) So it was like literally back in time. So it's like it's their chance meetings or an encounter that they had or a story that they had together. And it shows their relationship over the course of time. Right. And then they had that in the show. But uh, yeah, these minisodes were very uh, written by variously by John Finnemore, Cat Clark, Jeremy Dyson, and Andy Nyman. So uh, thanks, Hunting Violets. Uh, I'm glad you're listening. Glad you're sending in something. So if you have a little bit more detailed like thoughts on the podcast, it'd be great too. But uh, I'm glad that you uh, corrected me. But yeah, the uh, it, the season two was very much like about the story of um, of Crowley and Aziraphale's relationship more, right? Whereas in the first the first season was literally a beginning to end, like there's a whole story plot, and it's about the the son of Satan <laughs> coming into fruition. And then they they have a beginning and end of it, but Crowley and Aziraphale are part of it, and so is uh, so is um, yeah, John Hamm's character, which uh, uh, is eluding me. But they, uh, but with this one, it was more centric to the characters themselves, right? But uh, yeah, I'm glad it's like it's nice when you get uh, feedback every once in a while. So thank cool. you. Yeah, I, I I haven't seen the second app, uh, the second season. I saw the first season, and I was, you know, I thought it was okay. Mm. I just haven't, and I saw the first episode of the second season. I just haven't gotten back to it. Yeah, the well, the second season was pretty predominantly done by Gaiman himself. The first one was done was a collaboration of him and another writer. And then right. when Lara was on, she was discussing that apparently Neil worked out a story before the other writer passed on. That they had something in for part two, but uh, they they might give us that for season three and just keep right. it as a, a a three season series. Okay. So, but uh, very cool. So there's that feedback, but we do have some feedback from a friend of ours, and I'm just setting that up right now, and. And it's from our one and only friend, Steve. Ah, So here's what Steve has to say. I didn't listen to this before. <laughs> hey, Pamela, Steve here. Uh, I can't be on the podcast this week. Um, life gets in the way. I did watch the episode. And uh, wow, what a crazy start to this. Uh, what's going to be a crazy season. I can't wait to see more cameos of the boys regulars, hopefully. And maybe some uh, others uh, scattered in there that we've kind of heard about, had hints of. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, really crazy, crazy. I hope we get to see some more of Clancy Brown and, uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger in in future flashbacks. Maybe, I don't know if they're going to show us anything from them or not, but uh, it was sad to, to lose them both in one episode. And, uh, yeah, I just can't, can't wait to see where this uh, series is going to go. All right. Talk to you later. Awesome. Cool. So Steve couldn't make it, but he wanted to send a little thing, uh, what he thought about it, which is pretty cool. He'll be in next week, possibly. So we might have other people too, depending on if they want to jump on and have fun. Because everybody loves the boys in some way. <laughs> that they do. Well, let me tell you, it's a it's a great show, and the fact that Amazon is brave enough to make a show like that and not care what you know they they know there's an audience for it. Oh yeah. And I think that's actually great. And there is. I mean, it's not for everybody. It's not for kids. It's for honestly, I, honestly, for comic book, you know, 
fans out there and for people who love this type of genre. So yeah. I'm really happy that they could do something like that. I just wish that some of their other shows, you know, <laughs> were of the same quality. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was our feedback, everybody. So to let you know where you can send your feedback, just like Hunting Violets and Steve had done. Steve emailed it. So all you have to do is send an email to us like he did. All he did was record his voice and then send it as an attachment. All you have to do is send that to panels to pixels one at gmail.com. And that's panels to a spelled out to pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You can write out a text to the email if you want to, and we'll read that on the, the podcast, just like I did with the, uh, the YouTube comments. We can be seen on YouTube. Obviously, you can hear us. People use that as a device to listen to podcasts. So all you have to do is search Panels to Pixels podcast on YouTube. Subscribe so that way you're, you know, you're always getting your feed. Give the thumbs up if you actually like the episode and hit the bell so that way you'll be notified when the new episode arrives because sometimes you know we get used to looking at other things we can be found on facebook so with this i did put out an instagram so i basically put an image and then said leave your comments in the comments below the image and i utilized that same image now for uh, podcast art for youtube so all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels or if you go to instagram all you have to do is go to at panels to pixels podcast straight flat out. And then uh, there'll be the image there as well. We can be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice. So if there's a rating or review, preferably with Apple Podcasts, because that's the premier podcast everybody looks at and is judged on, please do so. Give us a rating or review there. It'd be awesome. Well, that's about it as far as like where to send feedback and our feedback. But Rob, where could they find you? They could find me out in the street. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He's part of the could, Warriors, everybody. Yeah. As, <laughs> you, you could find me and uh, and the crazy crew that we were part of in Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, where we actually do a fantasy cast on movies, you know, that were not very popular either in the theaters or they failed financially. So we kind of look into it, what could possibly go wrong and how we would have fixed it to make it better. And we also do our top five movie draft and it could be on movies. It could be on different genres, actors, directors, hell, even subjects in a certain movie, like let's say best car chase or the top five car chase or the top, you know, whatever it is. And now we're actually going to get into our, you know, our section that's called behind the score where Adam and I will review a different movie composer in every episode. And that one, and not every, ep well, every episode of that uh, segment. And we will cover, you know, the, the works that he's done and what our favorite, you know, movies that these composers have done and what they're actually very well known for. And we will, you know, we actually play some also some, uh, some examples of those, uh, of those tracks too. So for people who are fans of film music, Hmm. Uh, definitely tune in. Yep, it's pretty cool. And then you have like a top five sometimes, and yeah, things I like just said that, that uh, we do the top five uh, movie draft. Yeah, I like the, that. That's pretty fun. So you kind of break it up, so it's not the same old team. It's but, not the same thing. There's basically three segments in this one podcast. <laughs> yep. And as always, you can find me here on Panels of the Pixels podcast. You could hear me next week where we continue to do our coverage on Gen V. But we're also going to be picking up Loki season two. So we might divide that up to uh, two episodes, meaning one on specifically for Gen V and one for Loki season two. So that will uh, that way we're not spoiling anybody or people don't have to skip ahead. Right. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you can good. also hear me on Adrenaline Cinema podcast as well. There you guys, you all you all know what I do there. We cover basically action adventure of fantasy suspense thriller films we're gearing up for october for halloween so tomorrow is going to be sunday yeah the first so yep. first of october so jerry and i will be back with creature from the black lagoon but we'll also be covering on tuesday escape from new york which i actually put that out there too so you can still leave feedback we're going to be covering escape from new york with frank rodriguez 
So uh, we got a lot of stuff in, in line for you guys to uh, check out for Adrenaline Cinema Podcast as well. Literally just head to our Facebook page, which would be, you know, facebook.com forward slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. Or you could go to at Adrenaline Cinema Podcast on Instagram. And then uh, you could check out all the other stuff because I posted it all. And then you could leave uh, some sort of feedback there. So you could hear me there as well. Other than that, that's about it. And that was the podcast. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. I'm Robert. And different panel, different pixels, same podcast. This was Panels to Pixels podcast. We'll see you guys on the next panel. Later, everybody. Bye-bye. (laughs) Bye-bye.